Hello. We're going to talk about the pre post or change test situation. This is also referred to as the paired T test situation as well. Her scenario is Does Rogaine help men regrow hair? To answer this question, I measured 18 balding men. For each man, I marked off one square inch of scalp and counted the number of hairs. I then had the men apply Rogaine each day for a month. After this month, I once again counted the number of hairs within the same square inch of scalp, and the results are given. So first to dissect this scenario, there is one sample, the 18 men. <clears throat> there is one variable, and that is the number of hairs in that one square inch. And the level of measurement is ratio. And because of these answers, we know that the test situation is pre-poster change. But another good thing to note here is we have an inter- Intervention, And this intervention is applying Rogaine for one month. So the test situation is called change or pre-post. And because of these answers, that's how we know what the test situation is. Now, next, we need to figure out the question of interest. And the question of interest is, does Rogaine help men regrow hair? This is our question of interest. So now that we know that the test situation is changed or pre-post, we know the question of interest, we can now consider the hypotheses. So the hypotheses, the null hypothesis and symbols is this mu sub c because we're interested in the mean of the change scores. And our, our initial assumption is going to be that there is no change. And the alternative hypothesis as the same thing, and we just need to figure out, is it a greater than or is it a less than? Well, we look to the question of interest, and we are interested in regrowing hair, and so the change should be an increase, or there should be more hair after applying Rogaine. And so that's why this is a greater than. So what this looks like in English is... The average change in hair regrowth after applying Rogaine is zero. That is the mu sub c equals zero. Or another way to state that that's equivalent right here is that Rogaine does not help men regrow hair. The change is zero. Rogaine does not help. Well, our alternative hypothesis Is greater than zero, mu sub c greater than zero, the average change in hair growth after applying Rogaine is greater than zero. Or another way to state that is Rogaine helps men regrow hair. So now that we have the hypotheses, we can get the critical value. And so our null distribution for this test situation is the t distribution so we're going to use the t table to get our critical value and before we do that we need to know delta or degrees of freedom well for this test situation it's n minus one which is 18 minus one because our sample size is 18 which is 17. So our degrees of freedom is 17. And so we come down here to 17 degrees of freedom. 
And because we are doing a one tail test or a greater than, we're going to use the 0.05 column. And because it's a greater than, we leave it as the positive value. So my critical value equals 1.740. And so how this is going to work, we draw a number line, put zero. Because the alternative hypothesis is a greater than, it's over here is where I'm going to reject the null hypothesis, greater than that critical value. So the test statistic has to be greater than the critical value of 1.740 to reject the null hypothesis. Now we can get into calculating the test statistic. And so when we look at these results, we're given three pieces of information here. Now, when we look at this, you might see a P hat and go, oh, this should be the one sample proportion test situation. Well, this is a case where we're given some results that we don't need and don't make any sense. And so we looked at the whole scenario and determined it was the pre post or change test situation. So we know we don't need this kind of information. And this is something important here is if you're just using the results, to figure out the test situation, you can be tricked. You need to read and dissect the scenario, figure out the correct test situation, and then only use the appropriate results. So this is the mean of the change scores, which is what I want. And then notice this squared right here means this is the variance of the change scores. Now, I don't actually use the variance of the change scores in the equation of the test statistic. I use the standard deviation. And so the standard deviation of the change scores is equal to the square root of the variance of the change scores to the square root of this 279.36 is equal to a 45.6. So now when I do the test statistic, it's this mean of the change scores all over the standard deviation of the change scores and that divided by the square root of n. So that gets me to the 23.4 divided by the ratio 45.6 that divided by the square root of 18. When you do that, you get the 2.177. So that rounded to three decimal places. So that is the value of the test statistic. Now the p-value, the probability statement for the p-value is going to be the probability of, and we're going to use the T distribution, and it's going to be greater than the test statistic value. So this greater than right here is because the alternative hypothesis has a greater than in it. And what is implicitly right here is we are multiplying by the value one, just we don't typically say we're multiplying by the value one. So that's the probability statement for the p-value for this particular problem. Now, we can't actually, we would need to use a calc, or excuse me, a computer to get the value of the p-value. But this right here is the probability statement for the p-value. But we can compare the test statistic to our critical value. Remember the critical value is equal to 1.740 to make and determine our statistical decision. So I'm going to 
reject the null hypothesis because the test statistic 2.177 is greater than the critical value, which is the 1.740. So my statistical decision is reject the null hypothesis because the test statistic is greater than the critical value. So this leads now to our statistical decision. So I conclude, and we look right here, that is the alternative hypothesis in English. I conclude that the average change in hair growth after applying Rogaine is greater than zero. And then we interpret mu hat sub c. So specifically, I predict that men will regrow approximately 23 hairs per square inch. So because we failed to reject, or excuse me, because we rejected the null hypothesis, we rejected the null hypothesis, we conclude the alternative in English, and we interpret mu hat sub c.